Expanding your vocabulary using word parts. Suppose that you came across the following sentence in a human anatomy textbook. Trichromatic plates are used frequently in the text to illustrate the position of the body organs. If you did not know the meaning of trichromatic, how could you determine it? There are no context clues in the sentence, whereas one solution is to look up the word in the dictionary. An easier and faster way is to break the word into parts and analyze the meaning of each part. Many words in the English language are made up of word parts called prefixes, roots, and suffixes. These word parts have specific meanings that, when added together, can help you determine the meaning of the word as a whole. In the example used from the previous page, the word trichromatic can be divided into three words, its prefix, root, and suffix. You can see from this analysis that trichromatic means having three colors. Here is another example of a word that you can figure out by using prefixes, roots, and suffixes. The first step in using the prefix, root, suffix method is to become familiar with the most commonly used word parts. I have included a file attachment in Blackboard for you to use as a resource for commonly used word parts, including prefixes, roots, and suffixes. By becoming familiar with these commonly used word parts, you will have recall ability to recognize unfamiliar vocabulary merely by knowing its word part. For instance, more than 10,000 words begin with the prefix non. Also, another common prefix is pseudo, which is used in more than 400 words. A small amount of time spent learning word parts can yield a large payoff in new words learned. Before you begin to use word parts to figure out new words, here are a few things you need to know. In most cases, a word is built upon at least one root. Words can have more than one prefix, root, or suffix. Words do not always have a prefix and a suffix. For example, some words have neither a prefix or a suffix, like the word read. Whereas other words have a suffix but no prefix, such as the word reading. The spelling of roots may change as they are combined with suffixes. Different prefixes, roots, or suffixes may have the same meaning. For example, the prefix by, die, and duo all mean two. Word parts may have more than one meaning. For example, X means former, as in X president, but it can also mean out or outside, as in exit. Use a dictionary to find out which prefix to use. Several word parts mean not and make the word they precede mean the opposite of its original meaning. By using a dictionary, you can determine the word's part of speech and the best prefix to use. Prefixes appear at the beginning of many English words. They alter the meaning of the root to which they are connected. For example, if you add the prefix re to the word test, the word retest is formed, meaning to test again. A root carries the basic or core meaning of a word. Hundreds of root words are used to build other words in the English language. Suffixes are word endings that often change the part of a speech of a word. For example, adding the suffix y to the noun cloud forms the adjective cloudy. Accompanying the change in part of a speech is a shift in meaning. Often, several different words can be formed from a single root word by adding different suffixes, such as the examples provided. The root word class, but yet by adding different suffixes, are able to form different words with different meanings. For example, classify, classification, and classic. Think of roots as being at the root or core of a meaning. When you come upon a word you do not know, keep the following pointers in mind. First, look for the root. Think of this as looking for a word inside a larger word, such as unutterable. If you do not recognize the root, 
then you will probably not be able to figure out the word. The next step is to check its meaning in a dictionary. If you do recognize the word, the root word, look for a prefix, which in this example is un, which means not. Then locate the suffix, and again in this example is able, which means able to. Lastly, try out the meaning in the sentence in which the word was used. Substitute your meaning for the word and see whether the sentence makes sense.